Bokit Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, March the 15th, 2018, and a very serious situation developing near Aleppo as the Syrian army has responded to the air assault that the Turkish military took against uh, its own military around Aleppo, around the checkpoints yesterday, as we reported here on Israeli News Live. Now the Syrian army pounds Turkish forces in response to that latest deadly airstrike talking about raising the stakes, this will be one thing that the NATO allies will use against Syria, saying that their NATO partner has been struck by the Syrian military. That will bring about all types of problems in the Middle East. And Russia will have to either step up and really help President Bashar al-Assad, or if they remain neutral, it will be a total disaster for President Bashar al-Assad. Not only a disaster for him, but as well as the Kurds that are inside of Syria that have been the most gallant fighters on the ground against ISIS from the very beginning. And then you wonder why the United States has never come to the aid of the Kurds in reality. It is because the Kurds destroyed the very military, guerrilla military that was built, uh, built up by Barack Hussein Obama when he was president of the United States during his eight year tenure, putting together this guerrilla military uh, to go and help destabilize Syria. Again, I remind you, and I need to continue to pound this in, the true patriot of America, which was the former General, General Wesley Clark, who exposed that the United States was going to take down seven nations in five years. Again, we know they're off their time frame, but they began, and as General Wesley Clark pointed out, they would take out Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Iran, Libya, and also, don't forget, the Congo in Africa. And every one of these nations, even Egypt, has been either toppled by some type of intervention that the U.S. has created and the evidence has been there to support it, or direct confrontation, one or the other. But it normally starts with a destabilization, with protest, seemingly to be unarmed protest, at least that's what we have been shown in the Western media that is unarmed protest, when it's actually to the contrary. Same thing in Syria. It was never unarmed protest, but Western media outlets would only show you the unarmed protesters and what was happening there, not the armed resistance that was happening inside the country. ISIS as well, well armed, well given every type of military armament that they needed left there by President Barack Obama after the Gulf War ended to use against the Syrian population. And if it wasn't for the Kurds, ISIS would have obliterated the country completely. Not only the Kurds, but as well as the Russian intervention bringing in Russia, which really threw the tables or turned the tables completely on the uh, program that was going so well for the United States and what they were doing in this area. Very sad to say, I hate to say it, I'm an American citizen. I can't believe that we have actually been willing to stoop so low as to overthrow the only some, somewhat of a secular state in the Middle East there. And we can't say that Turkey is a secular state any longer, not after what President Erdogan has been doing. Anyone that even begins to speak a, a, a against his actions, they're imprisoned. So Syria is truly the last secular Arabic state in the region there. And the Kurds are fighting for their lives. Now, the Syrian army, though, a little different about than that of the Kurds that are being massacred by the Turkish government up in Afrin. But the Syrian army was pounded yesterday, as we reported, and now they have retaliated. It says here, Damascus, Syria, at 4.50 p.m., the Syrian army has reportedly bombed the Turkish military in northern Aleppo in response to deadly airstrikes conducted by Turkish jets against the pro-government troops. According to the UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, Turkish military positions in the town of Mare came under rocket attack fired by the Syrian army. No casualties have been reported thus far. And as I said, that will only provoke NATO into justifying their actions against the Syrian government. But yet at this time, no one is raising, I should say no one, 
some are, but very few are willing to tell the truth about what's really going on in Afrin. They want to point to East Gouda, where it is NATO-backed jihadists that are imprisoning the local population while Syria and Russia try to weed out those jihadists in the area that are trying to overthrow Damascus. Remember, that's the tactic. Guerrilla warfare, destabilize the city or the nation. In this case, they're trying to destabilize Damascus. We are seeing biblical prophecy right before your eyes. And don't forget, when you're looking at Isaiah 17, Isaiah 17 does not give a reward for the, for the downfall of this city. In fact, let's go to it real quick. And then I'm going into another very serious issue here uh, from Samira Gahadi, Gahaderi, uh, who is a Kurdish lady that lives in Washington that has been bringing out some very troubling footage there out of Syria or out of Af Syria, the city of Afrin. Let me real quick, though, take you, though, to that prophecy in Isaiah because so many times we look at the prophecy of Isaiah and very few people ever consider the fact that Isaiah, uh, the events that happened in Isaiah 17, the fall of Damascus, is not necessarily something that God is pleased with. The God of Israel, if you want to say it this way, all right? Now, it says here, the burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. The cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks, which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Verse 3 is very important. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim. That's the house of Israel that were dispersed back 780 years before uh, Israel became, uh, excuse me, before the house of Judah was dispersed in 70 AD. So it says, the fortress shall cease from Ephraim. When? When? When Damascus falls. Why? Because President Bashar al-Assad has been a safe haven for the Christians that live inside of Damascus. It says, And the kingdom from Damascus and the remnant of Aram, or the remnant of, of Syria, shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, they're going to also be going into exile as a, re, as a result. Now, if you read on down, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. Because why? This war that is happening all through the Middle East, all this destabilizing of these nations, Iraq, Iran, and the killing of the Christian population, you have to remember, Middle East Christians are direct result of the efforts of the apostles and Jesus himself, Yeshua, when he was here on the earth and he said, go only unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Even Egypt, the Christians in Egypt, Libya. These nations were overturned for what? Because these are the remnants of the house of Israel that believe that Yeshua was indeed the Messiah and there is an agenda to kill all of those early believers. And God goes on to say that you do this because you're not mindful of the rock of your salvation. That lets us know that it is Christ, supposedly Christian nations like America and European nations that are waging war in the Middle East that are not mindful of the rock of their salvation. They're not mindful of Christ. They might say it with their mouth, but they're liars. If you really cared, you know, about those Christians that are in the Middle East, then why didn't you take them as refugees? Why do you only take the radical Sunnis for refugees? You know, you don't want to face the truth. You're not, you're not interested in truth. You're only interested in, oh, that's Russian propaganda. You know what? And then the evangelical community sits there and backs all of this, thinking this is a great thing. You know, let's read what he says here. I think it's around verse 10 where he says that. Yes, verse 10. For thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation. Thou hast not been mindful of the rock of thy stronghold. The rock is Christ Jesus. Therefore thou didst plant plants of pleasantness and didst set with slips of a stranger. That's an adulterous affair. It's just in a metaphor. You plant the pleasant slips. What is that? You went inside there and you planted a bunch of evil people inside of Syria, inside of Libya, inside of Egypt. 
You planted those little hostile forces in there, neo-Nazis and everything else that would be willing to go in there and murder anybody and everybody that doesn't agree with this new world order agenda that you have. You got to thin down those Eastern believers in Christianity. Why? Because they don't back the Roman agenda. That's why. And nobody's willing to stand there and tell you the truth. They all want to tickle your ears. You know, well, you know, there's one man I have, I have to really give him uh, credit here. I saw his news, uh, Rick Wiles, and I'll talk about him in just a minute on True News. I seen him blast this issue about the uh, Russia being the one that used the chemical weapons against uh, this family inside of uh, Britain there. Very troubling. Now, what we're going to next, friends, is very disturbing. Uh, Samira uh, Gadari, she has been really sharing some very troubling images here that are coming out of Afrin, Syria. What is being done to the Kurds. Not only the Kurds, the Yazdis and the Christians that have come there for refuge. It was a city of refuge. You know, that tells me that the Turkish government knows nothing about God's biblical promises when they're supposed to be a city of refuge. Well, Afrin was a city of refuge. Not biblically speaking, I, I mind you. But in the case of Syria, that was the untouched city. Well, they couldn't stand for that, could they? All right, so you're going to see some very disturbing images here. This one right here, this is just civilians inside of a cave in a mountain trying to escape Turkish forces' relentless bombing of civilian population areas in Afrin. All right? Now, by the way, Sky News, Sky News actually did a publication of this. I watched it this morning, but I was on a different computer at the time. Uh, I think I was anyway, but anyway, they reported some of these very images from the hospital. So this is not, this is even a secular news organization showing you the, the deaths and casualties of the civilian population. So mind you, it's disturbing footage I'm going to share with you that Samira has actually uploaded. Listen to this here. This is in a hospital there in Afrin. So many lives have been lost. Children dead. As in the case you see. There was one that Sky News that brought out that was very troubling. I'm not going to play the entire thing. I'll leave you the link so you can see it for yourself. Sky News was showing a little boy in the hospital crying out for his mother. And the staff did not have the courage to tell him as of yet. I shouldn't say the courage. They were trying to be discreet to tell the little boy that his mother had died. She is a Christian woman. Uh, thanks to Erdogan and his relentless attack because he wants to get rid of the Kurds. And then, by the way, too, and, and I don't have it up here. I saw where, uh, and I'll pull it up here in just a moment here. Adnan Akhtar. This is, tells me what it is, all right? It'll tell you what it really is. Let's see what, the, I didn't. More people, uh, I'm not sure if this is the hospital or not. Let's see, a mother just found out that all of her children were killed when Turkish military shelled their home in Afrin's city center. I'll turn the volume down just a minute, guys. Uh, the more civilian casualties to follow as the world remains silent while Turkey indiscriminately bombs populated areas. All right, that was, that's that there. There's, uh, okay, this is one that I wanted you guys to see. I am going to give the volume a little bit so you can really understand the effect of this one here. All right. This is when the Turkish government is actually bombing the city. The man brave enough to stand there with incoming mortars and shells. I don't know. I'll give it to you a little better. This is just a civilian populated area. It's no, no military. You can hear the cries of children and women in the background. 
اسم دولت را ترک نابندی بازار اکنون دفعه He's actually telling you that it's a civilian area. Another bomb just exploded on the other side of him. You know, where the guy even survives is, is, would be a miracle if he actually does. At least we know he got the footage out. Uh, we want to thank Samira for, for posting this on Twitter, having the courage to do so. This is what's going on in the world is just remaining silent. No one seems to care what happens to the citizens of Africa. Why doesn't the State Department put a uh, spotlight on that? Why just see Scuda? Is it because there's going to be another sarin gas attack that will be carried out by jihadists? And they continue to spew, Nikki Haley continue to spew, spew the lies at the United Nations saying, talking about Khan Sheikhoun and that uh, the Russians and Syrians used chemical weapons against the civilian population there. When we showed you clear evidence from Seymour Hersh, the British investigative journalist, from Aaron Erdem, uh, the MP member of the Turkish parliament, they had all the evidence who was involved with these gas attacks. And the U.S. military was coordinating with the Russian military a strike on a building, and it just so happens that Russia made the mistake of letting the CIA know because they didn't want to have any of their operatives killed in this bombing, so they let them know. And it was the very CIA, according to Seymour Hersh, the British journalist, that was smuggling sarin gas via Turkey with the help of President Erdogan back in 2013 and now we find out that they were the very ones that were making the sarin gas, the jihadists they were taught after being trained in Jordan to be able to do this. Look, go back and look at all the special reports we did on this. Clearly the evidence is overwhelming that the sarin gas, the chemical weapons are always being used by jihadists in the area, in the region, and have been trained by Western partners to do so. Only to be able to blame it on Bashar al-Assad and use it against him. WikiLeaks even brought that out. Hmm, what do you know? You know, it's really sad, friends, that all this is happening. And then you see this stuff happen in Britain. You think anybody's going to really believe it? I don't. I don't believe it for a moment. Uh, let me just see here real quick here. I, I'd put this up, but I... Erdogan is transforming Turkey. This is according to the Washington Post. Erdogan is transforming Turkey into a totalitarian prison. Yeah. He's, you know why? They're reporting about how he's arresting any journalist that speaks against him whatsoever. Sure. So that's going to come to the West as well. Don't, don't kid yourself. Before long, if you're not saying the mainstream narrative, they're going to start imprisoning all the journalists on the Western side as well. Just give them time. Uh, Russia vows response to hostile actions by the UK over a Skripal case. It says here, Russian Foreign Ministry Sergei Lavrov said on, in an interview on Sputnik Thursday that Russia would expel UK diplomats soon, responding to the recent UK actions. Definitely, Lavrov said when asked whether Russia was ready to expel UK diplomats, adding that it would take place soon. At the same time, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova has dubbed insane the allegations made by UK Prime Minister Theresa May against Russia over the Skripal poisoning case. Now, here's what really gets interesting. Rick Wiles on True News, and I don't have the video in front of me. I just know that we'd seen it on Facebook. So if you want to try to search that out, he did a special broadcast uh, about the British nerve gas that was used. And we find out from the inside information that he was sharing with one of his own guests there that they actually were using or they had used this nerve agent in a public area and said it should have been quarantined off. There was a lot of information that Rick Wiles was sharing on his program about it that shows that Russia had nothing to do with it. And that the evidence against Russia was practically zero. Is it another false flag attack taking the lives of innocent civilians in order to justify this nuclear war they want to have in order to bring about this new world order. Don't forget, part of the new world order is to destroy nationalism. Yeah, Rome would like to see that, wouldn't they? Boris Johnson claims overwhelming evidence Russia was behind the scripple poisoning. Yeah, they won't share it though, will they? And they won't do according to the way it's supposed to be done. If you accuse a nation, they have a right also to examine the, uh, the actual 
evidence itself to be able to examine the traces of the chemical weapons to, to, to be able to have a, a, a neutral analysis regarding this. They're not going to do that. Just like they didn't do it in Khan Shikun either. Why? Because Russia knew good and well they had coordinated this entire attack on this one building with two jihadist groups that were forming to come together. And it, and it just so happened that the CIA heard about it because Russia informed them. And that next thing you know, the chemical weapon was used in Khan Shikun. And Russia brings out the fact that had it been the very guided bomb Russia had given the Syrian military to use, which they had also disclosed the Syrian pilot's name to the United States military. Everything was disclosed so the U.S. would be fully in the aware of what was going on. But that bomb would have left a huge crater in the road. Not some little tiny little pothole that was claimed to be used by the Syrian jet where the chemical weapon attacks happened. So this is what the public is not being told. You know, just, oh, it's, it's such a joke. It is such a joke, and they're using it to be able to justify a war. You know, it's just like the disarming of America. That's why they're pushing for the disarming of the United States right now, because when they bring this nuclear war on, when they start this war to get all this going and, and to begin to annihilate entire populations in the United States as well as over here. They want to bring about the new world order without any resistance. So this is why they're playing on the emotions of the American public. Yeah, there were kids that were killed in the school, but you know what? I personally don't think that this young man they accused was the guy that did it. I think he was a patsy, especially after the teacher that was sh shot in the arm says, why are the police here? Why are they shooting up the kids? Wow, that video disappeared, didn't it? Jeez. And they'll block your channel. They'll shut you down. They'll shut the video down. Now YouTube has this new policy they came out with. They're going to start censoring all of the conspiracy theories and move the, remove the videos from its platform. And that's why we're on live stream. We haven't got it going yet because we're still waiting for our internet to get installed here to where we can run this properly to get you live stream going at the same time. We're also going to DTube as well. We just got approved for DTube. We haven't started it yet, but be watching. I'll update you as soon as I can because we will be a target. They do not want you to know what we are saying to you. Oh my gosh. Anyway, U.S. plans to remain in Syria for a long time, if not forever, according to uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov. Uh, it says here, they are, there are no grounds to doubt the willingness of some U.S. officials to keep a foothold in Syria for a long time, if not forever, and contribute to the collapse of the Syrian Arab Republic. Lavrov said at a news conference in Moscow on Wednesday, various methods are being used, including information revealed via Russian defense and foreign ministries, which says that other provocations involving chemical weapons are being prepared. The foreign ministry said nothing that one such st staging might take place in eastern Gouda. Sure, it's going to take place in eastern Gouda. Why do you think the State Department announced publicly? Put a spotlight on Gouda. They want every news media watching so that when it happens, when they do it, the world will be galvanized to go and bomb the mess out of Damascus. Remember one thing, you'll have the blood of those children on your hand. You will be, the, 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 the leaders that are complicit in using that sarin gas to blame it on another nation, to falsely accuse one of the very Ten Commandments that God gave you shall not bear false witness against your brother. And let me say something to my American friends as Christians as well. You have Christians, brothers and sisters there. Isaiah 17 so declares that when he talks about the fortress of Ephraim shall cease. They'll no longer be the Christians there anymore. They're going to annihilate them. Because why? They have bared false witness against your brother. Maybe that's why Rex Tillerson was taken out. You know, I don't agree with a lot of things Rex Tillerson was doing, but I guarantee you one thing. I did notice when it came to North Korea, and even with Iran, he was kind of a thorn in the side for the president. New world order has to move forward, Mr. Tillerson. Maybe you didn't know that. Or maybe you did, and you were trying to be a little bit of a thorn in the side to keep it from happening. I don't know. 
I don't know. But I guarantee you one thing, Mike Pompeo, he'll be right there cheering the president on. Push the button, push the button. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Listen, if this type broadcast is a blessing to you and you want to support something that's going to be truthful, stand with us. We do need your support. You know, we're not like some of the ministries where, you know, every day somebody is giving to them and, and you know, but, you know, God does say you have not because you ask not. And so I don't like to ask all the time. But the thing is, it's true. If I don't ask, it doesn't happen. You know, there are some people, though, that do contribute on a regular basis and by God's grace. And we love you and thank you for that. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have the basic needs. But there's so much more we would like to be able to do. But it, it does take money to do so. And we're trying to get a lot of different platforms prepared because we know we are a target. I'm Stephen Benoon. Stand with us. IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there online. You can also donate on our live stream page. It's a totally different platform. So if you've had trouble donating on our website, you can do so there. And even on YouTube, right there above the subscribe button, there's a donation link there. You can donate there. And don't forget at the end of the video, both our addresses uh, which are peel boxes, one in Florida, one here in the Czech Republic. You can send to either place if you would like to donate that way there. Uh, we'd be a little bit, we'll be a little delayed as far as our American uh, address and responding to you because we like to respond to people that help support this ministry. Uh, and as far as though, if you send it to Czech Republic, we'll be here to the end of April. We'll be headed back to the United States in May. But God bless you and thank you for watching.